Uh, today is actually gonna be not a Mac related topic. We're gonna work on something on a personal computer, which is we have a mod work here. The scenario is, you know, is that uh, originally this was taken off from a broken top case. I basically received a broken ATX case. Um, it's actually a big one, massive. It just basically what happened a an old a thing got dropped and it got snapped so the idea is is just to get a um, casing replaced you know? so I thought to get a new casing a bit better case basically that's the actual case was it so that's what the case what came originally with but unfortunately yep um, I love my SSDs um, it unfortunately got snapped off someone was uh, carrying this thing and dropped it and obviously people did attempt to glue this in, don't know why, it's funny, so I want to basically put this build into a better casing app, yeah the fan just like completely came off so this fan is going to be useless, so I pulled off everything from this chassis and the case, and the, the case that we went for was actually one of those uh, starting prices, I think we got it like for 30 pounds or 40 pounds on Amazon, um, it's, it should be right, it's not an expensive case but I should actually package or motherboard uh, I believe the computer originally came with the two hard drives one was an SSD drive one was a one HD drive um, I think the most common thing I did want for this specific case because I need a top part the person who wants to actually change the case he has a CD a better CD drive still inside his machine so hopefully I can somehow kind of put the CD inside there I mean people still use the CDs these days it kind of makes sense, you know. Some companies still use floppy disks for their business tasks. Still, it kind of makes sense. And also, you can get a fan. But I believe for a basic build, like a chip build, additionally, a customer requested uh, a power supply, actually. Uh, a full 500 power supply, watt power supply should be enough. Uh, that's what I kind of for. The one more additional thing was so interesting is this specific specific actually built uh, so as you can see it's it looks like a 2010 2012 back in the days I mean it still has a um, rocking uh, the first generation PCI um, uh, slots in there for an older cards so it still has a PCI um, one, one slot actually so it has a full size slot inside here so what is so interesting is that actual purpose of this video I do want to record on this one because I bet uh, some or most of the people that are watching it pretty much know how to build computers but what is so interesting is that the processor underneath this heatsink um, I have not turned it on but I know for sure it does power on it still has a first generation i7 which is um, it's an i7-860 so it was the first generation i7 uh, I believe the base clock was at 2.8 GHz it comes with a quad core package so it has a 4 cores 8 logical processor so it's a 4 core 8 prep processor uh, originally had 4 gigs of RAM, but I had some spare RAM, which is I pushed it to 8 gigs of RAM. It'd be good with the 16 gigs of RAM because that's actually most recommended for these day standards now, gaming wise. Basically, we want to actually see how I actually i7, the first generation i7, actually performs as well. At the moment, I done the thermal paste change, so I had a obviously the first original thermal paste change, so I changed the thermal paste, um, and I believe we also gonna pair this motherboard with a GTX um, GTX 980 Ti which is um, this actually be a, a thing it actually be a no back combination so it's be actually interesting to see what's uh, what pushing back was it the CPU that is pushing back or is it the graphics card that is pushing back this specific model is a EVGA model I also cleared it um, changed the thermal pace so it's it's actually still decently good these days so now it's a 6 gig VRAM a lot of high-end gaming machines they require like 8 gigs minimum these days but to be honest with you this card still capable for triple eight gaming these days in 2022 so yeah at the overall of this conclusion of this video that what I want to do is pair our first i7 generation with 8 gigs around a and technically in GTX 980 Ti however uh, I didn't realize this I ordered it a 500 watt power supply so I'm hoping that this, because it, this is actually quite a 90 watt, 95 watts for a load. And this is actually quite around 250 watts for the load. So we're kind of consuming around 
over 300 watts from a power supply, like up to 350 watts of the power supply to require for the processor and the graphics card. Yeah, so this is the card that it's inside the system. Uh, basically, in overall, this just looks like one of those cheap GT 210s, actually, or GT 710s. I think it could potentially be a 210 card, and uh, it's good for business loads, office load processing, but uh, gaming-wise, yeah, forget about this one. So we're definitely going to add this big boy. So we got a car machine powered on, we got a actual screen showing up. Uh, yeah, seems yeah. The, seems the machine is alive. The graphics card seems registering. What matters is that this build actually works. So, what we'll what we will do is just start putting in a case then. Okay, so most of the components are pretty much connected. Um, just left to connect the power cables, which is the power switch, resets, all that kind of stuff. The only issue is, is that unfortunately, I might not be able to plug a USB 3.0 because it has a USB 3.0 in the front, but because this motherboard came around 2010 era, I believe we got USB 3.0 uh, back in 2011, 2012. So this is literally a year behind from a USB 3.0 technology. It, yeah, it doesn't even have an HDMI port, so it's a bit bollocks. But again, uh, it's a bit going to be complicated in this motherboard. You can use this uh, this actual connection for a USB 3.0 connector. Because uh, if I pull a graphics card, let's see, this is what came originally. So if I slap that in, uh, yeah, if you put any cards, you literally you don't have space to put anything in here unless you can get like an extension But yeah, this unfortunately computer does have a 3.0 connector, which is that's kind of sucks actually so Okay, so technically the machine is built um, For a quick one I did put the back original card that came with this motherboard I just want to initially make sure that um, the discs are working fine Two drives are showing up. Okay, so done a quick setup. So just let's see, moment true. So that should be a power button. Nothing. Oh yeah, I forgot to turn on the power supply. Okay, let's try that again. Another try. Okay, that seems fine. Potentially what I did, I checked everything. I just took off the board. I put it back in and seems fun so far so good so I'm a bit confused why it happened and but um, it seems like the main SSD is finding it uh, let's just check the CD drive is the CD we're gonna show up because the, the customer wants the CD but uh, the CD just doesn't wanna pop up 
Oh, the CD works. All right, sweet. The CD works. The customer have, can have a CD drive. Obviously, just gonna plug the audio cable. But yeah, let's see. Also, see if the reset button works. Yeah, the reset button also works. So I would just do some. I've done some. Key, um, it's not a proper cable management. Yeah, let's see how it goes. All right. So yep, the build is working. As I confirmed, it's one of those GT cards. Uh, I never seen a 220 before in my life. Actually, I only seen two tens from other people and my experience and on YouTube videos I never seen that 220 ones but yeah basically uh, what the last thing we will do we are gonna put a GTX 980 Ti we actually confirmed that it is actually working perfectly fine uh, this is, has Windows 7 operating system but the customer wants to actually is happy to uh, wipe the data technically so he's happy to wipe the drive install Windows 10 install the drivers uh, install a couple benchmarking we're gonna stress that this the actual temperatures in this one and maybe just do some small benchmarking CPU see if the actual power supply inside actually can handle because I'm hoping 500 watt power it should be enough for 980 Ti but then we'll just we'll find out a fresh copy of Windows 10. I have uh, installed the drivers, done some updates to make sure everything is gets stabled. So Windows is fully updated to the latest version at the moment. So uh, the moment what we're doing is running the temperature checks to see what kind of temperatures are we dealing with at the moment. So as you can see, I'm running a uh, full mark. I've been running this computer now for around now six, actually running around now for seven minutes. To familiarize what kind of temperatures we have so i'm running a full mark i'm running a cinebench at the same time as a reminder we're still using a 500 watt power supply inside so we just want to see what are we dealing with i already done a cinebench r23 benchmark test so i will put on the screen right now however uh at the moment running both tests running to most crucial components the processor and the graphics card so the processor as you can see we definitely like almost hitting like 98 degrees celsius when the card is running on my first Cinebench r23 test um the cpu spiked up to 85 degrees celsius but now since i'm running a card at the same time it's literally spiking spiking almost up to 100 celsius degrees you know and and because of that we're doing it's almost like is it's throttling a lot so it's down in the clock, clocks but in my experience the it's not common it, it still tries to keep up around 2.8 2.9 clock speed on a stress load which is that's all right then with the graphics card we looking around which is as again it's a gtx 980 ti uh we kind of looking around 83 degrees celsius 84 degrees celsius so the graphics card is not much as the processor so i will say as a stock cooler, the temperatures are actually okay for me, so uh, it's nothing to worry about. And it does this does show that the 500 watt power supply can actually handle this. So I don't think in the future there should be any problems having this specific power supply setup. Okay, I did test the idle temperatures. So the processor, since again remember 95 watt processor, so we're dealing with a power hungry processor. So with the, when it comes to idle temperatures, it idles around 45 to 50 degrees Celsius. The same goes with the graphics card, it idles between 27 and 30 degrees Celsius. So the idle temperatures are, are okay, but again, the processor is a bit higher than the graphics card because the processor uses literally 95 watts. So again, we're running on a hard drive and we're running on SSD as well. So I would say 500 watt power of watt, if you don't put anything more, than what I use at the moment in my in this specific build, then I would say yeah, it, it, the 500 watt power supply should be enough. So it's now it's been running for now 10 minutes while I talk. I will just wait for a couple minutes still to make sure it still runs perfectly fine. To finish up with this video, I'm gonna test some couple games that I have on my hard drive. 
Uh, firstly, I jumped on a, a Skyrim Special Edition. I will say I have no words. This game runs perfectly fine. I just only turned on anti aliasing off. Sometimes it's my preference. For speed heat, on the other hand, is slightly a uh, new game. Unfortunately, the system suffers due to lack of uh, CPU power. So there's a lot of stutters happening when there's a lot of changes happening in the game. However, this could be potentially be fixed with overclocking. So having a better cooler, and if you have a motherboard that potentially supports overclocking, that should help. Otherwise, maybe load out the settings and see how the game performs. Cyberpunk, surprisingly, it ran really well. At the moment, it's in the current patch, which is 1.61. This um, car game actually shares a bit of graphics performance and CPU performance. I would say having like a medium settings and crowd density um, low medium, it should be fine. Uh, it does usually all run around 60 FPS on an open area, but when you go to the crowd areas, it drop, drops down to 30. But that's nothing surprisingly because that's basically how this game usually works with other uh, basic systems. So is the i7 the first generation ideal for our current age, which is 2022-2023? Uh, in conclusion, what I will say, if you want to build a computer for basic esports titles, gaming, basic tasks, it's actually perfect processor even after more than 10 years. However, if you want to build a bit intensive system, i7 does show a bit of its age. So it's up to you to decide. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Hopefully that helps.